Hello, Dr. Ron England, and I'm going to, uh, this is part two of DynamoDB, and this is another um, lecture on specifically how to get data from some location to another location, specifically from a database that you might already have to DynamoDB. And I'm going to actually take you through some .NET code to do exactly this. Well, the first thing is, is I'm going to run over here to DynamoDB, and I've created a table called housing data, and that's where I want to stick this data. Um, the housing data has a hash key of ID. It's a single hash key. It's an active table. Right now it's also empty. The data source that I'm going to have here is the housing data from one of the case studies, which has a whole bunch of, I'm going to pull it out of this table, raw data, which has a whole bunch of fields. Okay, you see a bunch of fields and a bunch of rows of data that follow these fields. And I want to put all this over here into this um, Amazon Web Service data. So what I'm doing is I've created a method called transfer data. And we're going to walk through this method here. And the first thing about transfer data is I have four things that are going to get passed to this. Source table, source primary key, destination table, and destination primary key. So in this case, the source table is going to be the raw data table from SQL Server. The source primary key, in, in this case, is serial no. Okay, serial number, but serial no which is uh, this field right there. Serial no is the primary key that we're going to use here. In the destination, the table is uh, housing data, and the destination primary key in this case was ID because I set it up that way. So let's work through this, how this actually occurs. Well, step number one, you're going to open up a connection to the, to the SQL server where I'm going to get the data. To do this, I have to create a SQL connection. This is no different than any other SQL connection that I do in .NET. If you haven't seen it before, you might want to go through the lectures on interacting with data objects in .NET with a database. But step number one is to open a connection to the database, and that relies on having a connection string, which I've also got lectures on how to create and work with connection strings. So once you've got that, you've actually got a usable connection. Step number two create a data adapter. When you create a connection to a SQL Server database, okay, you want to get the information from the database and you want to put it inside of an object. Now the typical object you stick stuff inside of in SQL Server is a good old data set. Okay, you can also put it inside of a data table, but a data set is the typical place you're going to put this. Because a data set is basically a structure that can encapsulate all the information that comes back in a query. Multiple tables, multiple rows, okay, multiple columns, all that can come back. Okay, so the SQL adapter, I'm going to create this new SQL adapter, and I can create it using the connection. Hey, you got to connect to a database to get the data. And then the query that you're going to throw at that. So in this case, I'm going to select the top 100 star, basically top 100, all columns from source table. And remember, source table was passed to my function here. So source table is going to be the source table, which in this case we're going to call it with raw data, and get that back. So I've created the SQL data adapter. And what a SQL data adapter is able to do is it's able to, from SQL, fill in objects that can encapsulate data. Well, next step is I've got to create the data set. This is the object that's going to contain the data the data set. And the data set in this case will be named DS. And then I do adapter.fillDS because I named my SQL adapter adapter. I'm going to fill it, the data set, okay, with this adapter. And when that is done, I now have access to a data set which does have all the data from that query loaded inside of that data set. Well, the truth of the matter is in this case, I'm only going to use the table raw data. Now my, da my adapter could have come back with multiple tables, but in this case it's only going to come back with one table because it's only got a single a query that returns one table. So um, I'm going to set, I'm going to create a data table, DT, and I'm going to set it equal to the tables zero from the data set. The tables come back as an array of data tables, and I only want the first data table, and the first data table is indexed as zero, so that's going to bring back the first one. All right, now I'm ready to go. I've got my data inside of this data table now. The next thing I've got to do is I've got to go ahead. The next step is going to be to go ahead and open up the destination table. Now, you would have wanted to look at the previous lecture on Amazon Web Services DynamoDB to understand the concept of creating tables and documents and how to put stuff into an Amazon Web Service table. But in this case, I'm going to create a table object. 
And I'm going I'm to load that table using the client. It's an Amazon DynamoDB client. And I have to give it the name of the table. It's simply a string. And that table is going to be called desk table. So now I've got a source of data and I've got a destination of data. I've got two things going on here. Now comes the looping. And this is a tricky loop because when I do this, I also have to keep track of the names of the columns and the values of the columns and look at each individual row. And I'm going to have 100 rows that I'm going to work with here. So let's step through the next part of this. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to go through this row by row by row. And for each row, I'm going to bring it in, stick it inside of a document object. A document object is an Amazon Web Services object. I'm going to stick all the data inside of that document object. And you should definitely understand the concept of a document object from the lecture number one in Amazon Web Services. But once I put all the data in the document object, I can just simply tell it to put that document object up on into the table. I can actually just put it in there and it's going to end up in Amazon Web Services. So I'm going to do this row by row. This is the source data. dt.rows is my data table and it's going to return back a array of data rows, okay, or a collection of data rows. And I'm going to call each of those data rows dr. So I'm going to use a for each and I'm just going to go looping through each individual row to do this. So I actually write to the console starting insert row and then the name of the row that I'm going to start the insert with. And I actually started a counter row number zero. Okay, it makes it nice and easy to do. I've created the now next thing I got to do is I'm going to create the document. This is an Amazon Web Services document, okay, which is essentially a row in an Amazon Web Services table. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the primary key value of that document equal to the primary key value of the row from which I got the data. So to do that, I set doc destination PK. Destination PK actually prefers, refers to the primary key. And that was a number that I passed, I passed to the method right up front. Remember source table, source PK, destination table, destination PK. Okay. So I'm going to come back down here. We're going to look at this. Okay, so I set those. I set the uh, doc destination PK okay, value there equal to the first the first one. And now I'm going to set up another counter. First count, counter was called R for row. Second counter is going to be called C for column. Now, normally in most of the operations that I do, I would just go through every single cell within a table row. But the thing is, is once I reduce this data object to a set of table rows, I lose the names. It comes back as an array, and the array is um, is an index by an integer array, and I don't have a way to easily get back to the names of those. But I do have a way to do this. I can go through the um, tables, and I don't have to actually have ds.tables.0 here. I do remember that I called this dt, so I'm going to change that to dt, because dt is the data table. And dt.columns returns back a, a collection of data columns. That's all the columns in the source table. So for every data column in dt.columns, I'm now going to do a loop inside the first loop. So I'm looping for each row. Now I'm looping for every column within that row. And the reason I did it with the dt.columns is I need to look at the names of those columns because I got to make some decisions. So what things do I need to do? <clears throat> well, the first thing I'm going to do is I got to check here. I have an if statement. If dt rows array element r array element c what that does is it returns the actual contents of a cell and the first thing i got to really do is i got to make sure that that cell is not null okay so if it's not equal to null which i do dt row c is not equal to null and now the second check well i've already set the value of the primary key okay the primary key being the um, the one up there, the destination primary key and the source primary key. Okay, if you look right here, I set the value of the primary key in the document already. So I don't want to do it again. So what I do is I also check to make sure that the column name is not equal to the source PK. So in other words, I'm not going to enter it again into the document if it already was added to the document as the primary key. So, so essentially here I'm checking to see if, it, if the value that I want to put into this, into this specific cell of the document is not null and that it's not the primary key cell. 
So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and write to the console the column name and the value that I'm going to put into it. I'm just going to put, pop that out there. But more important, I'm going to take the doc. Remember, the doc is the document that's going to be put into the destination for the column name. Okay, So I'm going to keep the same names of each of those columns. And I'm going to convert to string the value of dt.rows and r and c. Um, be safe. They're all string elements. And I know that it's not going to be null because I checked to make sure it wasn't null up there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increment the column. So I'm going to go on to the next column. Um, but the next column is actually done in the for each. I'm just keeping track of that column number because, hey, it's dt rows and c, r and c. I'm actually doing it by its reference integer index. Okay. Now this should all make sense to you. If you think of a table, it's a collection of rows and a collection of columns that looks like an array, and it can be indexed by its row and its column. All right. So the rest of it's just knowing the syntax of these things that you're working with, which are data tables, data sets, data columns, and data rows. That is the .NET object to, for dealing with data. Okay. And it's not any different than dealing with data when you're working with the, with the, you know, the database. It's cut the same thing, rows and columns. Rows have numbers, columns have names. Okay, so now we put within this loop, okay, the value um, of uh, based, the, the index is going to be the column name, and we're going to put the value in there. So it's a key value pair. And then we're just going to do the final desk table, put item, and then we're going to increment the row. And that's it. Okay, so what happens if I run this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay, when I run it, I, it's a console app. If you notice right here, here's what's happening. I'm actually going through, and you can probably see it counting through. I told it to get 100 rows. So it's going through, and it's reading it from the source table. It's putting it into the document, and then it's writing it now to the destination table. And it really doesn't take that long to run through all of these individual columns. And when it gets to 100, it's done. Actually, 99, because remember, we started at 0. So now, what can I, I want to see that this actually worked. OK, so I'm done with the console. OK, I can close it. Data is now uploaded. I wrote those statements in. Let's go back over to here to here. So let's go back over to Amazon Web Services here. If I go to the out housing data and say Explore Table, OK, it should take a second to load. But the data that you would have seen, and while this is loading, I'll bring this over here. But the data you see here, okay, with RT, serial number, division, PUMA, region, ST, for each of those, if I come back over here, there they are. ID, ADH, okay, and ID being that, that primary uh, set. Now, if you notice one thing that this did, except for the primary key, which is the first one that does, it did actually sort them by alphabetical order. But one of the nice things that you can see here is that you've got these values that have been taken from the table, one table and put into the other table. So this is one way to do a very large mass, bringing it from one, sending it to another, um, using an actual .NET application. It's relatively straightforward to write and will work. As long as you've got a connection string, you know your source table's name, you know your source table's primary key, you know your destination table's name, your destination table's primary key, and you can set up a connection to both servers, it's going to work because it uses the standard .NET objects. So I know I covered some very heavy stuff. For people that aren't familiar with .NET and working with data objects, this is probably going to be flying right over your head. But for those people that are very used to doing this, very straightforward, very, very easy. And if you go to my lecture page, you'll also have um, access to all the source code that goes with this so that you can work with this and play with it. Thank you very much and good programming.